In this video I'm going to be making a canoe paddle. Well, two canoe paddles. I did make two paddles a couple of years ago out of scraps left over from when I built my cedar strip canoe, but they were always a bit rough and ready and um, although they performed perfectly all right, you know, they were functional, they didn't really look that nice and I've always fancied making a traditional canoe paddle. A chap called Neil Benson got in touch with me and told me about a book all about making a canoe paddle so I thought I'd give it a go. I'm gonna make two paddles, an otter tail paddle for myself, which is a great deep water paddle. So if you haven't got to worry about the shallows, it's a really good option. It's quiet when it enters and exits the water. And because of its design, it reduces fatigue. So if you're paddling for long hours on long canoe trips, it's perfect. And I'm also gonna make a beaver tail paddle for my good friend Ginge as a thank you for some gear that he sorted out for me. Um, last time he was up, he borrowed a paddle of mine, got on really well with it. So I'm gonna basically copy that design and the otter tail paddle is going to come right out of the book. This book is crammed full of huge amounts of detail and information on paddle design right from the history and how paddles have evolved through time to really the science behind different shapes of blade. If you're thinking about making your own paddle I'd strongly recommend this book as a, a superb resource for everything you need to know basically um, from design like I said through to all the various stages of construction. I've already machined up the wood that I need. So I've got two long pieces of ash for the shafts of both paddles. I've got some boards of cedar, which I'm gonna use for the blades. And then I've got some contrasting wood, which is gonna sandwich between the shaft and the blade, just to give it a bit of interest. And for that, I'm using some sapili. I'm gonna use a standard canoe grip for my otter tail paddle. And to create the width for that, I'm just gonna laminate two pieces of ash to either side of the stock piece for the for the shaft and then I'll shape that. Another thing I've already done is to spend a bit of time and sharpen up my plane irons. I can't stress how important that is. Um, not only is a sharp tool a safer tool to use but you're also less likely to ruin all of your hard work. If you use a blunt tool on your wood it's likely to tear the wood rather than slicing nicely through it. So just spend a bit of time, make sure your tools are nice and sharp. The glue I'm going to use for this is a polyurethane Gorilla Glue. It's totally waterproof and it's water activated. So I'll, I'll get onto the gluing in a minute. But you'll notice here that as I've just laid these in the clamp, um, these boards on the edge here are narrower, or thinner rather, than the um, ash and the sapili that I've got for the shaft of the, of the paddle. And that's because I can get away with thinner boards here because the blade is going to be fared down, it's gonna be made much thinner. It's really important to make sure that these are central on the pieces of wood that are thicker. There's my paddle and Ginger's is just laying there at the back. So I'm going to let those dry overnight and then we can start marking them out and shaping them. The 
The glue has set on my paddles, now it's time to mark out the blades. For my paddle, I've just used the offset table in the book, and that just gives you a load of measurements which I've then converted into millimetres, and you can make yourself a template by measuring from the centre line of the paddle all the way up from the bottom to the top, and that gives you a template for half of the half of the paddle blade. And for the other paddle, I'm just going to copy the blade on the paddle that I normally use. It's a, it's a really good paddle shape, loads of power, it's got a really big surface area, and um, it's a fast paddle. So I'm just going to literally offer this up onto a, a piece of board, and I'm going to trace around half of the blade. Uh, that way I can then just flip it over and I'll have a perfectly symmetrical pattern. I've already drawn a centre line on the shaft, so it's just a matter of lining that up on there. Take your time, make sure it's right, and then drawing down, which is not as easy as it would be if all of these boards were the same thickness. I'm having to use my eye a bit here and just sight down. I've cut out both canoe paddle blades and I'm pretty happy with how they're looking. The next thing I need to do is to put on here some marking lines, some guidelines for when I start to shape this paddle blade because obviously it's really thick at the moment and it needs to be taken down to become a much thinner, more effective, more efficient blade that will um, be quieter in the water. So I'm going to use some plastic for that. This is just um, damp proof membrane damp proof course um, and uh, it was recommended in the book to use this and I can see why you can kind of stretch it and um, you can get it pretty straight which is obviously what you want and I'm just going to hold that in place with tape and then I'm going to just go over it with spray paint and that will be my my mark and everywhere where there is paint that's what I need to take off if you see what I mean This area here where the blade comes up and joins the shaft is called the throat and it needs to begin to get wider here as we get up to this section here which is going to be that full thickness. So I'm using a template here which is taken from the book and that just gives you that gradual curve. So that's the first uh, reference line I need. The next one is going to be slightly wider and I'm going to use a different colour paint. This line is actually the edge thickness, just the very edge of the paddle. The overall blade thickness will be wider than this. Now you can see clearly those two lines, so I'm going to start by shaping it down to the black line until I've got rid of all of the black, and then the red line indicates just the thickness of the actual edge of the paddle. So this is why it's a good idea to leave the shaft until later, because I can now very easily get a G-cramp on here and cramp that to my bench here, and that'll keep the paddle still while I start to shake this down. finally playing down to its overall thickness. The next job is to, to camber the blade. 
So the red that you can see there is what I'm going to be removing basically. And I'm going to start by using my spoke shave and just take that off at 45 degrees all the way along, remove all of that red, and then I'll start to then take more off so it, so it creates that nice curve that canoe paddles have. And um, it'll remove some weight and give it some flex in the tip. These lines are just there for reference. So as I'm, as I'm planing away, I can see where I've been. That's the blade done, both blades done. And um, I'm quite relieved. <laughs> I was a little bit nervous about this stage and um, I'm really pleased with how it's come out. So that's really good. It's also a lot of work. The plating is hard work, it's tiring on your muscles. Um, and I finished off with, with a power sander just because, well, my arms were tired. <laughs> so that's really good. That's the... Um, Otter tail paddle, and then here we've got the beaver tail paddle, all thinned down and looking good. The next job is to shape the grip here. Like I said before, this is going to have a traditional canoe paddle grip, um, and that's going to require quite a bit of shaping in a minute. But before I do that, I just want to deal with something I need to do on the shaft itself. The shaft on this paddle is going to taper. So it's going to be a round profile up at the top here by the grip itself, becoming an elliptical or an oval shape down at the bottom here. So you've still got that strength, but you lose some of the weight out of the paddle. For the shape of the grip, I'm just going to use a template that I got out of the book and cut out of damp proof plastic. And it's just a matter of laying that over the, the end of the paddle. And I'm just going to draw around it. And I'll cut this out on the bandsaw. I'm using, you know, machinery that I've got. I'm a carpenter and joiner, so I have this stuff. I have a workshop and I have access to a much bigger joinery workshop as well. Um, if you haven't got access to these things, you know, you can, you can still do this. You can, you can cut all of these things by hand if you want to, um, you know, shaping and things. You can pick up planes pretty cheaply once we, once the world gets back to normal again. Um, you know, car boot sales and places like that are a really good source of tools like that. So, um, you know, you can pick up planes and things quite cheaply and um, you'd be able to make this paddle without it costing you a fortune on buying the tools in the first place. The grip is mostly shaped. There's still a little bit more sanding to do in places, but I'm pretty pleased with the shape. It's comfortable. Yeah. 
I'm now going to do the shaft. When you're painting these edges off, it's a good idea to have some guidelines to follow. Um, two lines on each face, and then when you plane, you just plane between those two lines, and it makes sure that the planing is even and you don't end up with a, a horrible, kind of lumpy shaft. Bearing in mind your hand is going to be down here, it wants to be nice and comfortable and straight. Uh, there's a really good way of marking that out, and it explains more in the book. So I'm not going to go into huge amounts of detail, but it involves drawing a square the width of the shaft um, and then drawing a diagonal line and then you can measure from the center point of that diagonal line to the corner and that gives you the position to set your marking gauge up and you can run your marking gauge along. Bear in mind that your shaft is now tapered so for the tapered edge you'll have to do that twice one at the thick end and one at the thin end and then draw a line with a with a straight edge to connect them up. taken off all of those edges and then I've taken them off again so I've got a rough kind of sort of 16 sided shaft but I can still feel all those little ridges and flats so I'm going to get rid of those now with some sandpaper back to the old shoe shining again and I'm just going to run, run down work up and down and get rid of all those ridges and make it nice and comfortable in the hand. Well, I am absolutely delighted with those two. They've come out really well. They're lightweight. I think they're gonna be really strong and they've got lots of flex in the tip, which is important while you're paddling. Yeah, I'm absolutely thrilled. I've still got the grip to do on the end of Ginger's paddle, but I'm gonna come back to that and do that a bit later on. I'm really aware of time and being able to get this video finished and out on time. So I really want to get on with the fiberglassing stage because there's drying times involved. The tips and the edges of canoe paddles are where you're going to get the most damage from hitting objects under the water, um, you know, using them to, to pry, push off from the bank, all the rest of it. Um, they tend to get a bit of a hard time. So it's a really good idea to protect the tip in particular, especially with a wooden paddle and especially with a laminated wooden paddle. And there's different ways of doing that. You can splice in a piece of wood which runs crossways. Um, yeah, all sorts of different ways. I'm gonna fiberglass. Um, I've got some fiberglass left over from building my cedar strip canoe. So I'm gonna use that and just cover the blades in a protective layer of fiberglass. This is the cloth I'm gonna use. It's a six ounce woven fiberglass cloth. And I'm gonna use West Systems two part epoxy resin. This stuff is excellent. It, dries completely clear so you see all the grain through you see all the wood through looks lovely so i've got my cloth laid out here and i'm just gonna lay the paddle over and just cut it out roughly i want about an inch overhang two pieces of uh, cloth per paddle just make sure before you do anything that there's no dust you can use a, a tack cloth for that. Here I've got my logo. Um, I've just literally printed that out on the computer onto normal paper with normal ink out of your printer and cut it out. And I'm gonna stick that onto my paddle just with a little bit of epoxy resin. And then when I fiberglass over it, that will be trapped in. You'll be able to see it through the fiberglass cloth just like you can the, the wood. So that is my plan. And then I've got Ginger's logo to go on his paddle. The other nice thing about this particular epoxy, it is a bit more expensive than others, but it has no odor. 
a lot of those epoxies out there absolutely stink to high heaven. This one is uh, where well, you can't smell at all, which is always a bonus. Well, I left that first bit of fiberglassing overnight to dry. It's had about 10 hours and it is nowhere near <laughs> dry. Um, it's, still, it's still very tacky and I need to sand the other side uh, where, the, where the fiberglass wrapped around the blade. I need to sand the other side smooth before I can fiberglass the other side, so it's gonna need longer. Um, fiberglassing takes a long time to cure. You know, the, the resin takes a long time to cure. I'm using uh, West Systems Epoxy. Um, the 207 special hardener, uh, which, which gives a nice clear finish, but it takes 10 to 15 hours to cure under kind of ideal conditions, ideal temperatures. Um, I've been doing this out in my workshop and, you know, there's, there's no heating on here overnight. So uh, that's obviously why it's, it's been too, too cold for it to cure properly. I'm going to plug in a heater now and just get some heat going on in here so I can try and get this to go off so that I can continue with the other side of the blade. But in the meantime, I'm gonna make the handle, the, uh, the grip for Ginger's paddle. I've got a bit of chestnut burl here. This is basically um, a, a scarring on a tree. Uh, this was given to me by a, a tree surgeon friend of mine. I'm hoping that hidden in here somewhere is gonna be a nice grip for Ginger's paddle. The nice thing about burl is that the grain does all sorts of crazy things. It goes all in different directions and you end up with really nice figuring. There's a few holes, as you often get, you know, in burl. So I'm gonna fill those with epoxy. I'm gonna make up a filler, just fill those up. Otherwise that might become uncomfortable in use. Plus water will get in there and it might end up rotting the grip. To make my filler, I've just mixed up some resin here, just a small amount. And to that, I'm gonna add some sanding dust and that's literally just fine sanding dust from when I made my canoe. I saved all the cedar dust that collected in the bottom of the canoe when I was sanding it. And um, I'm just gonna add a bit of that. And I'm also gonna add some of this stuff here. This is sold as colloidal silica and they're just silica fibers. And um, it basically 
thickens it all up and turns it into a really good strong filler. sanded the back of those paddle blades, got rid of all those rough jaggedy edges and just feathered the fiberglass, uh, you know, the weave down to the wood. So it's all nice and smooth. And now I'll fiberglass this side. It's quite hard work sanding fiberglass. It's really hard and uh, you'll get through, you know, loads of sanding discs if you're using an electric sander. It, it does take ages, but just persevere with it and um, take your time, you know, get a good smooth finish because any lumps and bumps you'll see through the next layer of fiberglass which goes on this side. But that's the side we've done. That's the side we're gonna do now. just fiberglassed that side and trimmed off the excess the excess cloth um, then that will be just trimmed up once that's once that's dried while I'm at this stage I'm also gonna epoxy the handle um, I've got gingers paddle that I'm going to do first um, and because the the ball grip isn't ready yet I've just literally nailed on a piece of wood onto the top just to form a kind of T so that I can hang it up to dry and that'll just make it a bit easier to, to handle because obviously once the Shaft is all covered in epoxy, it's going to be gooey and horrible. Having the heater in here last night has definitely helped. That has gone off much more quickly. The plan is to fill the weave on here now. You'll notice that it's got a kind of dull look to it and you can see the, the weave of the fiberglass cloth. So the idea now is to fill that weave and it's just a matter of applying more epoxy over the top and the epoxy will just lay in all the little holes left between the, the weave of the cloth and, um, and make it all nice and smooth. I've given the paddles a good sanding just to create a key for the epoxy to, to stick to while the filler coats are put on. If you manage to catch it while the epoxy is still in the gel state um, then you can avoid the sanding. You can just uh, apply the epoxy and it will chemically bond to the layer underneath. I was just a little bit too far gone and I didn't want to risk it. So I've sanded it to create a mechanical bond. And then it's just the waiting game again. I'm gonna come out and check it in about five hours, see whether it needs any more to fill the weave. If not, I'll just leave it to cure. If it does, then I'll have caught it at the gel state and I can just whack another coat on without having to sand it. Epoxy resin makes just the strongest glue you can think of if you mix it with some of these microfibers. So I'm just gonna put a bit in, because I haven't got very much resin here. And you're literally just gonna mix it up to make a kind of thick paste.
Right, I um, did put on another filler coat of epoxy and I've allowed that to dry and as much as it's paid me to do so, I've sanded these back down again. Um, and the reason for doing that is because the next stage is to get a coat or two of varnish on these. Um, epoxy, although totally waterproof and ideal for boat building and anything that, that's going to go in the water, um, is damaged by UV light. I'm going to be using a polyurethane varnish which has UV inhibitors in it, it's UV resistant. Um, a couple of coats of that on there and then any maintenance you need to do to your paddle in the future is just literally a bit of rubbing down and re-varnishing. Before I can apply the varnish I need to wash these paddles down really thoroughly. The dust that's left on the paddles from sanding the epoxy will stop the polyurethane from setting. You'll just end up with a horrible gloopy mess that doesn't harden and doesn't dry. So you need to make sure that you wash them really, really carefully, make sure there's no dust on there, dry them thoroughly, and then varnish. I am made up with these. They are comfortable, they're strong, they're flexible, and they're reasonably light. I could have made them lighter by using a lighter weight fiberglass cloth, but I just used up what I had, which was six ounce left over from building my canoe. If you're gonna build a paddle of your own, get yourself a copy of this book, it is excellent. Loads of really good tips and hints on building your paddle. I found it really useful. For the fiberglassing element, I use this book here for reference. This is Gil Gilpatrick's book, Making a Cedar Strip Canoe, and this is the book I followed when I built mine. Loads of good information on fiberglassing. Also, go and check out the West System website, because there's lots of information on there. And go and check out Jason Eek on YouTube. His Trail Guide Pictures uh, channel has loads of really good videos on fiberglassing and canoe building in general, and he's just a nice guy. If fiberglassing isn't your thing, you can just varnish your paddle, but you'll probably have to take some extra steps just to make sure the tip of your canoe blade is reinforced. I went down the fiberglassing route because I chose to use cedar, and cedar's a particularly soft wood. So without that fiberglass sheath, it wouldn't last five minutes. I've really enjoyed making these paddles. I've wanted to make a traditional paddle for ages, and I'm absolutely chuffed to bits. But it has been huge amounts of hard physical work. Speaking of which, I think I better go and get this t-shirt in the wash. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.